Well, 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 what do we have here? Another day, another set of politicians lying through their teeth. So today I wanted to talk about what antitrust laws are, what a monopoly really is, who really institutes monopolies. And um, I just want to put some information out there to the public because a lot of your news channels are lying to the public. The reason why that a lot of these news channels are lying to the public is because they are serving these politicians needs. These politicians are also lying to the public because they know that the public does not understand basic economics. If you think about it this way, uh, I've got this written up here on the board. Politicians, where do they go? Politicians go from a government school when they're a kid, then they go to another government school when they're in college, then they go straight into the government. So they completely skip, they skip business. So they don't understand business. So politicians at best are ignorant or at worst, they are lying to the public. Think about it this way. If your average politician's pension is $76,000 and we assume the 0.25 interest rate, which is what we, the American public, the private sector have to go off of for our retirements. If you assume a 0.25% interest rate, let's say that you were putting your portfolio into bonds to create $76,000, you would have to have a portfolio of $30 million. So essentially, while Congress is funding their pensions, they are requiring you to have $30 million so that you can retire. So if anyone out there still thinks that Congress is doing anything that is in your best interest, let me dispel this with this video. Congress is doing things that are in their best interest. Another thing that's just like kind of common sense is like, think about this. Imagine that every two years, every four years, your job, your livelihood was up for re-election and you had to get a majority vote. And the majority of people don't understand economics. What are you gonna say? You're gonna say whatever you gotta say so that you can get yourself back into office, so that you can continue to work, so that you can eventually get that pension, so that you can feed your family because it's in your best interest to say whatever the people are gonna eat up, even if it's not factually correct, even if it completely disagrees with basic principles of economics. So anyways, let's get into this. We're talking about the breakup of Facebook and all of these other tech companies. So. Let's just go ahead and get right into it. All right, so number one over here, people act in their best interest. So this is one of the things that Congress does not want to say because imagine this, imagine I'm a congressman and I come out and I say, people out there, the American people, everything that they're doing is because they wanted to be there. In other words, the position that you're in today is because that's where you willed yourself to. In other words, you have ownership of your life or you look out for your best interests or you have ownership of the position that you have found yourself in life. Of course, people aren't going to say that. How many people can actually take criticism like that? How many people have actually had either a tough sports coach or they've had somebody that was a tough mentor that just said, hey, look, stop up. You need to do better with your life. You need to fix it. I'm not going to fix it. You need to fix yourself. How many people have actually had that mentor? Remember, they need to get at least 50% of the people to vote for them. Of course, they're not going to say that. They're going to say, hey, uh, it's, it's his fault. <laughs> it's that guy's fault. It's that race's fault. It's that gender's fault. That's why your life is messed up. It's that person's fault. They're not going to blame the person. So basic economics, people act in their best interest. In other words, employees act in their best interest. Employees try to seek the best pay. Employers try to seek the lowest pay. Um, people that are consuming, they try to get the lowest price. Everyone is acting in their own self-interest. So in other words, if you end up in a position in life, it's because you put yourself there. So you consented to that condition and that's why you're in that condition. This is just a fact of psychology. Like I cannot put myself over here if I don't will it with my mind. That's how the body works. That's how, that's just the fact of life. But to that topic, we need to talk about what is a real monopoly. What is a real monopoly? So a real monopoly, as we've got over here, a real monopoly is something where the people do not have another option. That would be like something like a, a cartel, for example, like a, a railroad cartel. If they all just got together and they just fixed the prices of the railroads and if they just set prices artificially high, then people didn't have any alternative to the railroads. That would be a railroad cartel like there was back before planes. An airline cartel today would not be the same because 
Let's say that all the airlines went out of business except for one airline. The airline would still not have a monopoly over travel because people can still take the bus, people can still walk, people can still take a car, people can still rent a car, people can take an Uber, people can take a boat. Even if you take over all of the airlines, you still don't have a monopoly over travel. And people can just choose not to travel at all because the prices are too high. Real monopolies. So let's talk about real monopolies. As you can probably see up here, real monopolies are things like the DMV. Have you ever been to the DMV and seen how inefficient the DMV is? Wouldn't you love to go to a private company and get your license for half the price in half the time? Not even half the time because it could be way less than half the time. If the DMV was privatized, if they were actually if there were actually multiple places that you could go get your license and those places were actually turning a profit they would be much faster if they weren't government agencies licenses so for example like going and getting your hair license or going and getting license uh, for some profession licenses the government has a monopoly on that let me give you another example licenses such as the taxi license that thing was up to a million dollars at one point and then they got out competed by the private sector they got out competed by uber they got out competed by lyft and now they can't charge such exor exorbitant rates because they're no longer a monopoly which the funny thing is i actually used to be an uber driver before i started doing this youtube thing and now they're trying to make it so that they're not uh, they're not 1099 employees, they're trying to make them uh, W-2 employees. In other words, they're going to price them out of the market because they're gonna be, uh, they're gonna have to adhere to these minimum wage laws. They're gonna not be able to work their own hours. They're gonna basically take away the freedoms of being that 1099 status, of that being a good side hustle because now if you have hours, you're basically a taxi driver and you work for Uber directly and you're just an employee. Okay, and the last real monopoly is the Federal Reserve, or in other words, the people that print all the money. That is a real monopoly. That is, they have all control. You can, you, there's no other game in town. There's no way for you to get other dollars unless you take some foreign exchange or you try to use cryptocurrency, which you can actually buy things with cryptocurrency. But Federal Reserve, they have a monopoly. They are the only game in town when it comes to money. You notice something common about these things. All of these monopolies are the government. All of these monopolies are the government. The government is kind of projecting on the private sector when they say that these companies are monopolies. These companies are not monopolies because they have competitors. They have to compete. If somebody comes in and undercuts them in price, they're going to lose all of their business. How loyal are you? For example, let's say you shop at Walmart. How loyal are you to Walmart? If you shop at Amazon, how loyal are you to Amazon? If somebody came in and undercut them in price, how quickly would you go over to the other competitor? Very quickly. All right, let's talk a little bit about the myth of predatory pricing, or in other words, Congress will tell us that there are certain firms that can charge such low prices because they have such economy of scale that when they charge these low prices, they can essentially drive people out of business. And once they drive them out of business, then they'll jack up prices because they have a monopoly. So let's just examine the logic of that. You're going to take losses in the short term just so that you can drive these businesses out of business. Think about what would actually happen because people don't know what happens when businesses go out of business. When businesses go out of business, they don't just cease to exist. When businesses go out of business, there's still buildings there, the employees are still there, the assets are still there. So what happens when a business goes down? Another business rises up, somebody else buys the business, and then they basically just pop back up. It's like cutting off a wart. So let's say that you go through predatory pricing, you cut off that wart. Guess what? Somebody's gonna invest in that company, somebody's gonna take it over, they're gonna run it again, they're coming right back at you. So in the long term, you don't wanna do that as a business. You don't wanna run yourself razor thin on your margins eventually you have to make some type of a profit or you're going to die as a business you're not going to grow as a business so congress will tell you this that oh they're just gonna put people out of business they're putting mom and pop out of business but that's just not the case mom and pop if mom and pop are going out of business then also that means that mom and pop need to do another thing so think about it like this from 1959 to 1966 bill russell won every single NBA championship. Does that mean that Bill Russell had a monopoly? Does that mean that Bill Russell's teammates should be sent to other teams? 
No, that means that Bill Russell was very competitive. He was very effective from 1959 to 1966. Usain Bolt, he won so many 100 meter dashes in a row. Should he have been slowed down? Should they have put him five meters behind the starting line? No, Usain Bolt dominated his era and then people replaced him and he got old. And then after that, now he doesn't run anymore. It's gonna be the same thing with Amazon. It was the same thing with every store that came before them. And people don't take into account that things like Amazon, things like the stores that came before Amazon, they benefit the consumer. They benefit the consumer through low prices because these businesses, the only way for them to compete for your dollar is to offer you the lowest cost possible. So you're not gonna pay more just because um, they're Amazon. You're not gonna pay more. For example, in the hearing, they had an example where the, uh, the congressperson said, hey, what if, what if uh, you guys just decide to jack up the prices of diapers? And I would like to pose that question to you guys. What would you guys do if you go on amazon.com one day and the price of diapers is sky high? You probably close your phone, you go to the store and you buy a pack of diapers and Amazon would be like, oh man, we didn't sell any diapers this month. And then guess what happens? They have to lower their prices back down. So that's what happens. As long as other people can still make diapers, as long as there's still equity in the markets, you can't monopolize diapers. All right, moving on down here. So we already talked about apparent monopolies, or in other words, even if there's only one competitor in the market, that does not mean that there is not competition. Like we said with the Usain Bolt uh, example, there were always people running the race, but they were losing to him. There were always people in the NBA finals against Bill Russell, but they were losing. So does that mean that we should downgrade, we should help out the competitors because one person is winning? No, that's not what that means. Anti-competitive means that, hey, all five of us up here, let's all, let's all get in a tie and let's all win. That's what that would be. If people were doing that, if there was five people who were all wanting to win the race and hey, let's all get a tie, that's not competition. That's a cartel. If there's one person winning all the time, that is competition. That's not a cartel. So competition creates the lowest prices, we already said that, and narrowly defined market. So let's talk about a narrowly defined market. If you narrowly define something, like uh, let's, let's, let's just go with the airline industry example again. If you narrowly define the airline industry as, the, as flight, then you're not taking into account that eventually if flights become so expensive, people will just stop flying because you can travel in ways that don't require you to fly. And besides that, as long as there are access to private and public equity, airlines can pop up all the time. Think Richard Branson and Virgin Airlines. I almost said Virgin Galactic. All right, now that we've laid down the groundwork, let's get into these actual companies and the allegations they are facing. So we've got, they have too much power. So let's talk about the power that companies actually have. Companies have the power to offer you goods and services and ask for your money back. Whereas the government has <laughs> the power to take your money through taxes. Companies do not have that same power. Companies cannot put you into wage slavery unless you consent to it. Companies have the power to offer you a job in exchange for money. That's what companies have the power to do. They have the power to ask for your consent and you give them something and they give you something. Whereas the government, as we said, DMV, all that stuff, they're the only game in town. That's a real monopoly. Companies cannot have a real monopoly unless they work together. Cartels, we already went over that. Google, so search engines. Google, you don't have to go to Google. You can go to another search engine. They are just the best game in town. Everybody knows this, so that's why they use Google. If somebody wants to shut down Google, they need to make a better search engine. If somebody wants to stop YouTube, they need to make a better video platform, which might be coming if they keep on censoring people here on YouTube. The Apple App Store. So there are alternatives. You can get an Android. You can get apps from another place. You can get apps from the internet. You don't have to use the Apple App Store. So only thing they can do, like we said before, is offer you goods and services in exchange for your money. And one thing that people don't understand about prices is that people don't pay a price unless they feel like they're paying less than what is uh, what they're getting is worth. So depending on how you value your dollar, every transaction in a capitalist system is beneficial to both parties. So Congress is not gonna tell you that. Congress is not going to say that, that that's how economic systems work. Facebook, Congress wants Facebook to control speech. So there is a certain amount of, you know, you don't want hate speech running amok on your platform, but at the same time, hate speech 
I don't like it personally, but I will defend people's right to speak. If they have something shitty to say and I don't particularly like it, I don't think that that is a good precedent to set to stop people from speaking out. Stopping people from speaking out is the precursor to totalitarianism. Think about it. Let's say that we are good people and we don't like what somebody is saying, so we stop them from talking on Facebook. Or let's say that we are the government and we don't like what people are saying, so we stop them from saying it. Well, now you've set a precursor for people to be to have their speech silenced. So let's say that you're, the, the, the things that you're silencing are actually good things to silence initially. But then let's say that some racist or some asshole gets in power in the government and they already have the power to silence people's speech. It's a bad precedent because a lot of people out there don't like the current president. So imagine if there's a mega racist that gets into, into the office, which people seem to think that the current president is a mega racist. I'm not one to speak on that, but let's just say that there's a mega racist in the office. Do you want that person to have the power to stop speech? Do you want that person to have the power to control what is said? It's a bad precedent, that's, that's what I'm getting at. So last one is Amazon. So we already talked about Amazon. Everybody has to compete on price. So to close this up, basically what I wanted to convey with this is that Congress is acting in their best interest. They're not necessarily acting in the best interest of the people. Even if Congress puts something into place that seems beneficial right now and it ends up being bad later, well, they can just blame somebody else for that. They can get out of there, they can go to another district, they can go to somewhere else, and they can say, look, I did a good thing and then it got out of control. So Congress and anybody is acting in their best interest, but a lot of times the interests of business and the interests of the people who are trying to get reelected because they have to appeal to the masses are not uh, in lockstep. So hopefully you guys uh, liked this video. And if you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. Join the Facebook group. We just crossed 100 members. And I will see you guys in the next video.